I'm Alessandra Bertolini, uh, I work uh, for Artex Studio and I joined Artex Studio in 2016, first as an associate director and now I'm the principal of the office here in Barcelona. Uh, I come from an architectural background, so I studied architecture in Italy and I graduated in uh, 2004, but uh, who was there on the day of my graduation? <laughs> I can remember very well my words at the end of the ceremony, and I was say, I don't want to be an architect. <laughs> so um, during my studies, I always felt uh, very different from my um, uh, uni mates because um, they were uh, all very much into the architecture at the big scale and they dreamed to design big buildings and I always been like more interested in details and in lighting. So uh, while they, my mates were very focused on extreme design of the roof of the Chapelle de Notre Dame, uh, uh, the Rochamp de um, by Le Corbusier, I was amazed by the light coming from the splayed windows in the interiors or um, why they were you know um, getting super excited uh, with the hyperbolic shapes of uh, Gary's architecture I was uh, more fascinated by mm, the interplay of lighter shadows that um, you could see in Barragans or Legoretta's um, work so when I actually terminated my studies in architecture, I thought that I was not fit for this job. I couldn't recognize myself with my other mates, but um, thanks to um, two professors I had in my last year of, uh, of studies, actually I've been able to find my way because um, both Francesco Bianchi and Massimo Alfieri, they actually introduced me to lighting. And I found it so interesting and so um, engaging that I decided to attend a master in Rome. Uh, at that time, the second edition of the second level master of Latin design in Rome was actually starting and I decided, okay, I cannot throw away my years of study. And I sign up and I find my way in the field. Well, at Artex Studio uh, specifically, we actually work with lighting generally, so we are not specialized in uh, one um, typology of projects. So um, we can work from the really small uh, private gallery for like a private house uh, to um, a master plan, a lighting master plan. So we are not specialized uh, specifically on something. Uh, but uh, regarding what uh, I enjoy the most, um, Generally, I like to work um, on projects that require um, specific details for different areas. So in the past, I enjoyed very much working with um, on heritage building because I really like the challenge of the limitation. Sometimes probably it's the same thing uh, like university. So I was scared by the white paper. You need to start from scratch and I like to um, work with limitations so find a way to achieve what i want even if i have to deal with um, some uh, difficulties uh, given from the architecture or from the typology of building i'm working on and the other things i like that is another challenging one uh, i like to work on um, like residential projects or small projects for privates because I really like the relationship you can have with the clients although sometimes it's uh, really challenging <laughs> but actually um, uh, I find it um, I really like to help someone achieving its own uh, personal dreams and vision and having this close relationship with a client When I talk to people who are not from the field or where, um, when I try to sell our uh, services to, a, for example, a private client who doesn't really understand, I always uh, give this example that like um, a beautiful architecture, if it's badly lit, can be something awful, but an empty room with a, with a good lighting can actually um, convey many different atmosphere and can appear in many different ways. So um, a lighting designer I feel is uh, for the arch architecture like a pinch of salt for a cake, so it strengthens the characteristic of the space.
um, lighting uh, at the end is what defines the shapes of the architecture, is what enhances the texture of the materials that are used in the architecture and renders the colors of the architecture. So um, this is more like from an aesthetical point of view. But apart from this one, especially on very big projects, I think that um, a professional lighting design can really help controlling the budget and the efficiency of a lighting installation. So in other words, we could say that um, the fees uh, for a lighting designer are well repaid with the savings that you, um, the client can have uh, with regards to energy and with the products. Uh, a professional and independent lighting designer will always specify the best product available on the market and not just um, like the closest product in a smaller in a smaller range to achieve the design goals. So the more I travel in um, economically speaking poorest country, because sometimes they have a richness that goes uh, a lot above what we have, I feel, um, the more I feel we should really go back to a more natural and I think a somehow simpler approach to lighting. So in the world poorest country, uh, where electricity doesn't um, reach everybody, life is actually ruled by the life cycles of sun and moon. So working hour starts with sunrise. Uh, you can see that as soon as the sun goes up, life goes back. And working hours ends before sunset because people need to be able to reach their home uh, safely before darkness come and then evening uh, hours are more dedicated like to social activities like i don't know storytelling uh, at the warm light of a bonfire and then night hours are for resting and while uh, traveling in this in those countries I found myself uh, a few times eating under the lighting of a few candles and looking at an amazing starry sky that you don't see normally in our environment. And I often question myself uh, on the lighting in our cities, in the buildings, and I always thought, shouldn't we really go back to like simplicity, to darkness? Shouldn't we do it with less? Fireflies. <laughs> Fireflies. Uh, because we all need to learn how to self bright and shine in time of darkness. <laughs> so um, the project I'm most proud of is actually a project um, I haven't been working on on paper, but it's the very first Latin project I was involved in. So when I was um, still studying at the master, we had um, one of the lecturers who came and then at the end of the lecture invited us uh, to go and help him uh, for the installation of um, an exhibition in Naples. So Maurizio Di Polo was um, the exhibition designer for this exhibition that was all about uh, silver objects found in the archaeological site of Pompeii and it was uh, something <laughs> crazy. I still remember um, one uh, teaspoon that was all decorated and light passing through and it was just, uh, you know, <laughs> amazing. So um, the um, exhibition uh, was um, designed to have the objects uh, protected in glazed cubes and on top of these um, display cases there was uh, like a, an iron band that concealed a really simple old-fashioned uh, decroic MR16 that was mounted onto like a wooden stick and we were able to move this uh, wooden stick along the depth of the, of the display case and on top of the um, top glazed um, side of the cube there was mm, a black cardboard so our work was actually to start cutting out the black uh, cardboard and direct the lighting so let's call it a do-it-yourself uh, framing project <laughs> so on a very low budget project and to me it was so amazing to see like light coming through these holes and catching the object and actually 
sculpturing the light um, around these objects. And sometimes we have to deal uh, with um, like beautifully uh, decorated cups. And of course, the issue was that we were lighting from the outside of the case and from the top of the case. So to provide lighting onto the decoration, um, we laid um, gold and silver lift onto the iron stands where these objects were uh, set on. And by reflections, they took life. So to me, when he invited us to go on the opening day, of course, because uh, it was like uh, three of us who went and helped him. And it was, I was so proud to look at this <laughs> exhibition and the visitors, and that was my very first commissioning. So probably, yeah, in my memory, that's like the project I'm most proud of. <laughs> Probably the most challenging was uh, to um, walk in uh, a building site in Italy and, and have male builders accepting that the woman was giving them instruction. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, quite hard to get them first to trust you and then to accept that they are kind of direct by a woman. I have three women, three women, sorry, I own a lot, I think, for who I am and uh, where I'm going. And the three of them are first my grandmother, who um, always loved uh, to travel uh, from the 1950s. She has been traveling all around the world, leaving my grandfather at home because he had a traveling. But she, she went anywhere she didn't care she was like okay i'm going i need it <laughs> and she always told me oh travel as much as you can because it's the best thing i did in life and when she was 80 she actually asked us to buy her uh, a laptop for christmas because she wanted to learn how to go on the internet so um, i really hope i will keep uh, having this anger for traveling, discovering and learning <laughs> all, all the way through my life. Uh, second one uh, is my mom that uh, with uh, uh, four children uh, didn't uh, stop her or had not been an obstacle for her to become an esteemed uh, pediatrician. So. I think from, from her, I've learned that there must be a way to become a professional and have a private life <laughs> at the same time. And then the third one is actually a woman who is uh, more related to um, lighting design, so uh, more related to my career, and uh, it's uh, Rebecca Weir uh, from LightIQ, because um, <coughs> Uh, as a lighting designer, I really honor her a lot because she hired me when I was still, uh, as a senior designer, where I was still living and working in Italy. And <clears throat> she gave me lots of trust and uh, she encouraged me all the way through. And she taught me how to keep my head up still. So I honor her a lot. <laughs> So more than light, I think it's uh, darkness that uh, inspires me because to design the lighting, I think you, need, you must start from darkness and uh, light then uncovers shapes or reveals texture, shows directions and light can move the souls. So um, coming from a very man-based country, <laughs> because I think Italy is really <laughs> man-based country, I think that uh, unfortunately women still do not have the same possibility as men in many fields, not only in lighting. And I believe that we are still stuck in the insane belief that life in adult age is all about working. So basically you need to dedicate 100% uh, of yourself to, to your profession and your job. And uh, we also think that uh, like a man can dedicate uh, the 100% of his life to a job, but a woman has to uh, split herself in between house, family and their job. So if we want to change things, I think we first, um, uh, we need to start accepting that men and women, 
they have the same responsibilities, the same rights, the same aspirations and this uh, in the house, with the family and on the workplace. And only then we can really change uh, and make it possible. Well, lighting is amazing and probably the message for women in lighting would be to never let anyone put a limit uh, to how much you can grow and especially don't let yourself do it.